Hey everybody, welcome. This is David Chatham with Angel Oak Creative. This is our latest uh, podcast episode of our nonprofit State of Mind podcast. This is season two, so excited about that. Uh, just grateful that uh, folks are listening a little bit and uh, and hopefully learning a few things from some of these nonprofit leaders that we're uh, we're talking to. We have another great guest today. I have Creighton Blackwell. Uh, he's the Chief Community Impact Pub, uh, Impact Public Affairs Officer at Coastal Credit Union. Welcome, Creighton. Yes, welcome. Good morning. I hope all is well. Appreciate you it having me. Well, Creighton, uh, I have followed your career, not in a stalking-ish way, but uh, followed you career, your career over these last, gosh, I don't know how long. How long have you been with Coastal now? Uh, 13 years at Coastal. Okay. So I was going to say at least the last 10 years or so uh, following you there and your interest and engagement in the in the nonprofit sector, the community and Coastal's commitment to that. I've just been really impressed by that. So thank you, first of all, for all of the work that you all do to support nonprofits and to uh, help strengthen them each day. Um, would love to hear kind of your journey to how you got to this role, what interested you in being part of making a community impact um sure and and, and once again just thank you i, I appreciate sure. the opportunity <clears throat> the opportunities we get to talk about impact and the work that's done in our communities and there's no way we could ever ignore the work and the impact that nonprofits make and i will tell you my, my history to this is it's, it's been an interesting term but it actually is something that when you hear it makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> my professionalism, I, I started out and working in banks. Uh, I mentioned I've been at Coastal for 13 years, but I had a prior 16 years that I had worked in regional banks. I had worked with uh, Royal Bank of Canada. I worked with um, National Bank of Commerce, NBC. And I can tell you in my heart, I always was a, per a public servant. That's how I kind of thought of mm -hmm. myself, even coming from college. Uh, where I graduated at UNC uh, in Chapel Hill. I'm from Roxboro, North Carolina, so I'm not okay. from far. And I've always kind of had that public servant thought. What can we do for people? How can we help people be able to uh, live better lives? I've always kind of had that in the back of me. So I was always in governmental stuff. I was always in things that involved people. I figured out a long time ago Community, in whatever definitions we like to use, community simply means people. <laughs> so yeah. I figured out as a banker early on that, wait a minute, and this is when I'm managing branches, I've managed um, markets, I've managed cities, and I remember I, I worked on the teller line. I've done yeah. it all. <laughs> remember, <laughs> wait. So it seems that if I'm helping people, I'm helping community. Yeah. And then I kept looking when I was now doing business banking and I'm trying to say, okay, I can uplift these people. I can uplift these businesses. Thus I can uplift, uplift community because people is community, right? That's that thing is going to continue to be something in, throughout my narrative. And I said, well, wait a minute, who are some of the people that are helping these groups, these people the most, who are the businesses that are helping these people? Yeah. And I kept seeing these nonprofit entities all over the place, helping people the most. I could directly see it. And then I looked and I said, well, wait a minute. And I, I was in a meeting one time and I looked around the room and I looked and I said, you know something? I bet you 100 percent of this room. is somehow being helped and impacted by a nonprofit today. Yeah. And none of them really realizes it at that level. Hmm. This is interesting. Yeah. Now, I'm thinking this early in my banking career, which spans 28 years now. Wow. And I remember thinking, you know something? I'm going to be a banker that helps. And for a short period of time, I was even kind of going around branding myself. I'm the banker for nonprofits. <laughs> Love it. This is now 25, 20 years ago. 
And I was going around saying, I'm the banker for nonprofits because oh. those are the people I see directly, the most direct definition of helping people from a business standpoint was coming from these nonprofit entities. And I see yeah. how that everybody, and I don't see people talking about it enough at that level. So you know something, I will bank you. How can I help build you up from a financial standpoint? Like that's how it started. Hey, you know something, even if I give you free checking accounts, that's money that you're not having to pay back and fees that can that's go right. back. Mission. I was thinking about it from that level. Over the years, it continued to grow and it continued to say, well, wait a minute, let's move beyond just the, the banking app aspects. How can we now tailor it even more to the missions and the objectives and forget the lanes that we like to play in because we as holistic people, we have needs where all of these different nonprofits yeah. can impact me personally. Why would I not be there? Right. Why would the resources that I uh, can connect with, why would we not bring those resources together? Not look at it in those different silos. So this is what I'm thinking all these years. So as I'm building up more of my financial acumen and I'm moving throughout from branches to corporate and, uh, okay, I've done, I'm, I've run business banking strategy and I've gone through all the, the market exec stuff and I run marketing and I run um, a public institutional banking. I've been a part of that. Like I, I, I kept putting all of this different banking experience together but I'm looking at it out of this eye. Yeah. How do I continue to look at what they the nonprofits are doing? And when I decided to leave, and I found out about credit unions, these not for profit mm -hmm. so cooperatives. Wait a minute, those exist? Hmm. Is this a, a even a different layer to be able to now take this vision of people that I have? And how I'm using all of my banking experience. And I can now hopefully amplify these people who are doing so much for communities, nonprofits, to an even higher level. Yeah. So I moved to Coastal. And my trajectory has continued to move in that standpoint. So even have I take a, a managed retail banking. And once again, I already had this long layer of things that I've done from this regional or national or international standpoint. Now I've built up to this chair. Now it all meets. It all meets yeah. on the not-for-profit member-owned financial cooperative nature, which now allows me to say, no, now go build, go really have those partnerships. That's how I got to this point. That's how I, in these lack of lanes that I like to look in, Gets me involved in nonprofits of all sizes, all entities, all levels, and it's done intentionally. Yeah. Because I know all of these different angles and connections still deal with you and how I can help you, not just in one piece, but the whole of you. And that's the yeah. strategy that we really built out at Coastal and how I got from there to here. Well, thank you for sharing that. And the uh, the one of the last things you said about being intentional, right? That really struck a chord. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't think we can be very effective if we're just kind of accidentally doing something, right? Or we happen to run into an opportunity that makes sense. You're that's one thing that I've noticed about you in Coastal over the years is you're you are very intentional about about being a part of the community, right? Um, just for full disclosure, I've been a member of Coastal since I was like seven years old. So about 50 years, I've been a member back when it was IBM Credit Union and uh, have always appreciated uh, being a, a member and felt appreciated there. Uh, and part of that is the fact that you all play such a role in the community. So uh, just want to make sure people know that I, I might have a little bias uh, in this uh, in this conversation. Um you know, the work you're doing, I mean, I do, I see you, you know, with uh, 100 women, you're, you know, 100 women who give a hoot, uh, those folks, uh, you know, I see you on boards, I see you at events, uh, you know, why, why does Coastal 
invest so much in you to allow you to invest so much in the community. It, it's, you know, what, what, what is the DNA there that, you know, you feel like is so impactful if we want to keep using that word, right? Well, I would say two things. Number one, there is a fundamental belief and, and we have these principles mm -hmm. that unions live by. They all have these same principles, cooperative principles, one of those principles is concern for community. Mm, okay. Um, that is a documented, very mission-driven, oriented, purpose-driven piece of what all of our businesses are built to do. So there's a natural drive yeah. that's in your strategies, right? We, we say all the time, if it's not in your mission statements, your visions, your strategies, then it doesn't happen. Right. And the intentionality comes from, remember the old adage that you hear sometimes where it's like, um, you know, if it's not a plan, it's a wish. Yeah. And sometimes those wishes don't turn into realistic things because you never planned it to happen. You're just hoping right. it. Yeah. And while hope is something that we uh, always have to have, well, we want to match that with direct intentionality. So that concern for community is something that we we believe in. Yeah, I love that. And, and and I would say there's another piece to this though that is it, it is simply in and and we have it in one of um, our branding lines that we've used before, which is about living better. Mm. And our commitment is how can we simply help people live better? Yes, we are purveyors of financial information products and services that yeah. is we are experts in but are some of those things also connected to things that we have to go through with medical issues right. with medical issues with educational issues uh, we can line up different things and say well how does it affect does, does your finance affect you so that, that means those are things that we're involved in right if you it's developmental issues that we go through every day. Well, we're right in the middle of those. So not to be afraid to speak into some of those to see, well, we don't know everything. We know the financial pieces of it, but are we connected to resources that can help you? Yeah. So why not go be a part of the nonprofits that are focusing on education? Yeah. It's part of the entire will. So I like to say, and I, I am one of those that I, I will tell you, and I, I will warn you, I get in trouble for this because I am not necessarily a believer, even though I understand it, I'm not necessarily a believer in the statement. Well, you can't do everything for everyone. <laughs> you you, you, you right. can't be against all people. Now, strategically, I understand it. I, right. I do an, a, a, enough um strategy consulting and executive coaching to get it i understand what it means right but i also understand the statement and this is what i i go by but you can do more for more yeah if if you try sometimes we when you target you target yourself away from who you're not helping yeah not just who you decided to help yeah. so instead of just staying in that lane I, we would challenge and say, okay, you know something? No, go be a part of that education piece. Go be a part of that healthcare piece. Go be a part of that mental health piece. Yeah. No, that's more for more. Not yeah, I, just think a lot of, I think a lot of people, I don't want to call it an excuse, but maybe a reason. They, they feel like if they can't do it all, they can't do anything, right? That they get they get paralyzed by that sense of, it's not going to make an impact or it's not going to, you know, be enough. And to your point, more is more, right? Sometimes less is more, but usually in the nonprofit world, more is more, right? So, you know, it's, uh, I think people get in this mindset, well, if I can't, you know, do everything, then I'm not, I'm not going to do anything because I'm going to fail, right? Correct. And, it, and it's not, don't try to do everything. I get it. Right. I, I yeah. do. There is always the the balance in this type of statement of not trying to have 
the bigger appetite that your stomach can't really absorb, right? Yeah. But I also get the fact of saying, but wait a minute, from my capacity, did I have the opportunity to help that one more person today? Did yeah. I have the opportunity to help that one more organization today that's going to be a in a multiplier effect that if I help that one organization, they might have helped another 900 people. Yeah. Was that in my capacity to do, or did I limit myself? Test the limits. And yeah. I don't be the expert in it to be connected to the right resource. Then in some cases that more, that more was simply a telephone call to get you to the right organization. But did I just provide value? Right. To yeah. this, those are all the different mores that I speak about. And yeah. that's reasons why you do see, it, you might see me or others in a lot of different areas. And you might say, wow, are those people crazy? How are they doing? <laughs> it's with that theory and that strategy. And yes, it's a different capacity that we run with. Yeah. It run really fast. And I like to be very strategic and intentional because it yeah. is intentional but it allows us to touch so many more. Yeah. Well, and you all do. It's amazing. I people like you and folks, Maggie Kane, right. And yep. uh, you know, Danny Rosen and all these folks here in the local market that, you know, just are, are so uh, active and so engaged in the nonprofit sector and making such an impact. So, yeah, I'm so impressed by that and sometimes feel very unworthy to, uh, but it's uh, I know we all do what we can, right. Um, well, but here's the power of the collective. Right. Because whether it's a Maggie or a Danny, because we're all part of this, we all work together. We we work as this collective. We have a group we call the Corporate Avengers. Yeah. And it's this group that have all come together because we know we still have to be really good in our silos mm. in the in the areas that we're in. But we know that the world is bigger than that. Yeah. So how do we combine our resources to be able to then say, OK, now let's go out and do more for this. Our impact can grow that much more. Now, you have to say corporate Avengers because we will get sued um, by Marvel. Comment. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because our theme this year and I should have put on that shirt, but our theme this year is nonprofit superpowers. And what, what, you know, what, what superpower, you know, are you bringing to the nonprofit sector and how are you using it to increase impact and to make uh, us a better, you know, a better community, right? So, you know, I, I, I'm guessing you have multiple superpowers. So, uh, you know, in, in all of that, but I love the idea of the corporate Avengers. I'm going to have to have to see how Angel Oak can become a part of that, uh, that group. And, and I, I also have T-shirts. So, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, we'll I, do a T-shirt swap, too. So that'll I, be good. We would share that. But and, and I think you you will hear this a lot. But I, I would say it is the the power of. Intentional vision. Mm. And the power of the network. Yeah. The power because, of we, right? The power of all of us, right? Absolutely. And to now be able, though, to not just bring people together, but to bring all of this network together under a high enough vision and to be able to see a bigger picture, a bigger vision of a, a bigger scale that of impact, a bigger ways that nonprofits can function and yeah. work together and then bring in the private partnerships that really want to be able to support but don't yet know how yeah. in a deeper level to bring in the municipality piece of it and really weave a a bigger tapestry of yeah. how wait a minute all of these entities are all stakeholders so how do those stakeholders bring their resources to be able to now benefit and get behind your mission? Yeah. 
And that was really on full display, some of our work with Healing Transitions, right? And yes. how the community has come around that organization in the last few years, especially, and really help with municipalities. It's been banking. It's, you know, all of these folks have come around and been a part of helping it to make a bigger impact, right? Um, thinking about that, what what do you what do you look for? What does Coastal uh, maybe help some of our nonprofit leaders here who might be listening to this? What do you look for in a in an organization that says, you know, I, I want to support them, right? It, it's are there certain you know metrics that you look at? Are there certain kinds of uh, you know signs that you look for as you're thinking about, hey, you know, is is there an opportunity to help this organization, right? Sure. Uh, there's some real basic strategies that we're looking for, or at least mission objectives. One of those is, and we talk a lot about access, mm -hmm. right? And creating access for services uh, that could be technical skills. It could be um, non-technical skills. It can be access to services or abilities or status that they do not normally have. Okay. So organizations that out ha has programs, I would use the example of Dress for Success. Mm -hmm. And I'll, that are even in how they're able to, not only just from clothing, but the interviewing skills and things of that nature, giving them access to those type of interviewing skills and that we ourselves, we volunteer or help do those interviews. Once That's again, great. those are things that we do and resources that we have that in some cases, we don't think that those are valuable enough to then offer to our nonprofit partners right. that matches. Look at things differently, see those yeah. angles. But from that type of access to even a technical asset um, access, to our friends at Cramden Institute when yeah. we were going through COVID and you had a lot of your education systems that now had to bring the students home and do it virtually, but they needed laptops. Mm. Okay, access, because many didn't have that ability to be able to get that. So partner with Cramden to, tech the, to be able to get people direct laptops so that now their kids would be able to really explore that education. Two yeah. different examples, but it's how we define access. That's great. And we can really support organizations that are simply trying to get people into the, a different access than, to things that they don't normally have. That's great. And those are, you know, we, I don't know if you've had a chance to see this uncharitable movie lately with Ted uh, yes. Pilata, but you know, that, that's a good point, right? Because some of those things, some people consider overhead, right? That, uh, that, that you know, uh, go ahead. looks like you had a thought there. No, you, you're exactly right. And, and it comes back to, once again, even broadening out. I, I, when I'm doing counseling um, sessions or strategy sessions, I do a lot of strategic planning with certain, non, with nonprofits. And that's one of the things that I ask about is, so, what are the different things that are beneficial to you meeting your mission that maybe organizations have that you hadn't thought about in that way? Yeah. Right? In that sense of... And that often isn't funded, right? Through other sources. Correct. Correct. How do you... Sometimes there are blind spots. Yeah. And in many cases, once again, it's... It's not the nonprofit in many cases. It might be us yeah. that needs to help. I will mention, we may not know how to help, but we want to. Oh, we didn't know that we could help by providing people who can actually, we have a whole HR department they interview all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're, they're equipped, right. right? That's what they do every day. Right. So, Okay. But wait a minute, and some of that may actually decrease some of the workload, some of the productivity, the uh, or simply the capacity could help with the capacity of that nonprofit when you have that partner that could bring that. 
That's right. Right. There's a lot more that we have to offer. We should be, yes, there's money, there's grants, there's donations. But there's, a, there's a plethora of different resources that we have to offer. Take those and be able to understand what some of those are and match them to your needs. Yeah. And it'd be interesting how that then could hopefully allow you to even be more profitable with your time, be more yeah. productive with your time, to be more so that you could spend more of your time in doing some of the other things. Yeah. That nice. you have under your ridiculous amount of things that you have to do to to make sure you meet your missions. Yeah, and that's so important. Thank you. Thank you all for having that view and that vision of of being willing to support, whether it's through adding capacity or whether it's financially, to be willing to to think outside that that normal box, right? That that people say they, you know, I, it's so frustrating because people like, you know, I only want money to go to programs, right? But then who's running the programs? You know, you, you, you gotta, you need to pay people and you need to pay them a reasonably good salary so that they will stay and have longevity and be take, be able to take care of their family. Right. So it's a, it's a frustrating challenge. Uh, I think that we've set up with our, within the, within the community around nonprofits and yes. expectations. Right. Well, it, yes, it prevents a, a difficult challenge, right? You know, I, once again, I sit on enough boards of nonprofits and chair enough. I think I'm up to 14 now, if I'm not wow. mistaken. Um, but how many times, and I will have these conversations, how many times are we creating programs to chase, to have to be able to get that dollar? Right, exactly, like right. The program itself was made for that, but the program actually brought so much more complexity. It brought so much more stress. Oh man. We talk about the mental uh, health of, our, of ourselves, right? When we talk about how many, how much turnover are we having within yeah. our the nonprofit world, and some of that is because you're having to juggle so much, right? Okay, um, how can we change it? So, like little small things, like changing even how you do your grant applications. Mm -hmm. We were very intentional with us that make it as simple as possible. So that it's not a a fifteen pager that you need to do. Thank you, crazy. It's Thank done you. with the empathy of saying, "Well, we know you have a lot. So how can we do it out of the empathy of your eyes to make sure it sees what we need to see? We want to activate it more. So no, let's not go through all of the eighteen twenty steps that wasn't necessary." Thank you. So even looking at it, from, it's looking at it out of the eye, because even to that, it's extended value, right? Yeah. That's the time you get back. That's, a, that's one less thing on today's list of 200 things that you have that you had to worry about. Oh, gosh, did we finish that? No, it was it was really quick. It was fast. We wanted to put it together that way. So I would also tell you, even being a part of that much uh, in the world, leading with that empathy and creating it around that empathy. Yeah. That's something else that we want to be able to do. That's a differentiator because we know it helps you. Anything that's in the list of things that can help would well, take those, that low hanging fruit stuff off the yeah. tree. Well, and you're don't, a great don't example. be so overly that you skip those things because the little things mean a lot. We know that. Yeah. Well, you're set, set, setting a great example for other funders and other or the other corporate, uh, you know, entities that want to, to practice corporate social responsibility, that part of that responsibility is not overburdening the nonprofit that you're trying to help. Right. <laughs> so uh, that's I love that uh, position that you all have taken and that. I think people should really pay attention to that. You mentioned you're on quite a few boards to put it, uh, to, you know, kind of, uh, uh, put a fine point on that, but, uh, what, what are, how would you, I guess, characterize the, the kind of the state of nonprofits, you know, today of, 
the ones that you're working with? What are they doing really well? And what are some areas that, you know, are there some commonalities of things, some things that they could improve on? Um, what, I, and I would say what we're doing very well, what nonprofits continue to do very well is they continue to stay, I would say, focus on the mission and the objective. Yeah. Actually, there's no lack of nonprofits um, that are building, that are there. Yeah. That's a focus and where I see those that stand up even hard, even more are those that once again, they're so committed to the mission of that specific nonprofit that they're also willing to learn all the other pieces of it that comes into it, including the business apparatus of how that mission right. needs to be done. Not just the, the social piece of it or the emotional piece of it, but measuring, having that business piece of it yeah. and having the right people on your boards, being intentional about the right skill sets on your boards that adds to those things, that adds yeah. to not just the business, not just the networking, not just the development, not just the social, not just the emotional, but all of those. That intentionality with that, number one, when you have that set up, I think I what we've been able to see is we've seen longer turnover in leadership, uh, lo a longer tenure of leadership staying. Yeah. Like I, I've seen some really um, difficult statistics where, and I, I remember we ran this, uh, it's been a few years ago, but we looked at this statistic and it was a survey that said that in the state of North Carolina, from a, an executive director standpoint, how many of the executive directors would possibly be leaving that position within the next three years? Wow. Okay. And it was like 75%. Oh gosh, man. But, and, and we're like, well, why is some of that? Is it pressures of the work? Is it pressures of the, uh, of your boards? And it was like, yeah. <laughs> All of the above. It, it, it was, a, it was a lot of that. Okay. So those where I've seen it, seen the more success is more stability in that board because intentionally the, mm. the talents that you pulled out that says, this is what the talents we need in that board and able for us to meet this, this real mission that we have here. Yeah. It was laid out. It's very direct. It was intentionally pulled off. And what it did was, it created a, a capacity more. Yeah. When, when the, so now the capacity is more, you have more resources. Yeah. Increased engagement. So now people wanted to stay. The turnovers were were, were smaller. Um, having your intensity, having those leaders. Yeah. The skill sets and talents of those leaders and staff, like those things, is what when it's in really done extremely well with that type of, of structure and strategy, those are doing extremely well. When some of those are missing is when you see more of the struggles. Yeah. And I tell you from a funder's standpoint, where funders would then sometimes be a little bit more hesitant is when they don't have the the feeling that that organization's uh, board is is structured. That's why yeah. so many organizations, when when you ask when you want to do a grant or something, one of the things they ask you for is, can you send me a list of your board of directors? Yeah, that's what they're looking at. Yeah, right. They're looking yeah. at, at some of that. Yeah. So those are just a couple of things that I I would that's say great. what right now I see are and these are things that are controllable yeah which is why I, I start with this right yeah. this is controllable and while you have a lot of funders today that are looking for and they'll tell you because a, a challenge of it is some funders who are saying no we only want to look at programs mm -hmm. okay 
So knowing what's the appetite of the people that you're actually looking to grant to. Right. Because there's plenty who would do capacity uh, building. Yeah. But who are they? So right. it does take even more effort now to figure out. So who are those people? Like, what is our appetites? Yeah. I told you a little bit of what our appetites are. You're yeah. going to have some that are saying, hey, we only do K through 12 education. Right. That's what we do. Okay. So either you have something that is shaped in that or you go out and find the some of us others that will fit more into your scheme of things. Yeah. When you have that strategic board, they might be able to ask answer some of those questions for you. That's right. Because intentionally, they might already know because they might have some of those relationships. So I, I just give you that because it all comes no, that's back great. to the strategy and intentionality of how you make this a successful business. Yep. Successful business that is doing good for everyone it touches. That's great. Well, one final question. Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of folks who are wanting to have relationships with you and, and uh, Coastal. Um, how can how can nonprofits uh, deepen a relationship with you and, and you know other corporate uh, other corporate uh, entities that uh, you know have some degree of, of engagement with the with the nonprofit community? What what can they do to you know to maybe get noticed? What can they do to to maybe have a, a deeper, longer term relationship with you? Well, I, I would say it this way. Approach us all, but approach us in the first standpoint. Be willing to have the conversation simply about who and how you serve. Yeah. It, it starts there first. It's relationship one building 101. So don't come with the handout first don't, unless, unless you're trying to shake hands. <laughs> yeah, the, the first thing is don't show up with the sponsorship um, <laughs> for, for, for the event that you're having next week. There you go. Um, that's your second or third meeting. <laughs> yeah. And but, again, it's that intentionality too, right? Is you're being strategic, you're being intentional about how you're approaching this and not being transactional, right? Well, and that's the, that's the key. You use the perfect word. It is relationship versus transactional yeah and if it's transactional then now you're leaving it in just the hopes that this transaction fits into the appetite of what they want a transaction to look like right if it's not then it's it's done yeah but the relationship piece of it um i've said to many nonprofits, and i'm having this conversation because i would tell you from us we're not interested in just putting our logo on an event and that being it right. that's out of interest it's not just about brand awareness in that standpoint i yeah. talk a lot about saying no for us it's about brand credibility we want people to see it active we when we're showing up we want you to be able to say hey i saw creighton today i saw coastal i saw that community impact team I saw their CEO, I saw their CAO, I saw oh. whoever, but when you saw them, it was in an action of doing something positive for their community. Positive for and community, once again, means to what to me? Simply people. Yeah. Oh, well, guess what? You, everyone, a constituents of everything that all of us business people, all the corporations, everyone is a constituent to them. Yeah. Everyone. So we all have a stake. Yeah. So if we all have a stake, then talk to each other like we have a stake in this. So come to us and really talk about this is who you are. This is how we can build. This is how we see what you all do. Right. Yeah. It, look at the website and see, oh, here's a few things that this organization is interested in what we're doing. We yeah. see ourselves in connecting with that. Let's just talk about it. I, Because I've had this conversation with people 
and it stayed there. And the, the next conversation I had was, oh, so here is our um, next event. And I'm like, you're leaving money on the table. Yeah. I would have gave you $5,000 for X event. But honestly, from a relationship standpoint, I believe in so much more of what you're doing. There is more money we would have done if we would have talked about what we can do for the year. Wow. Because yeah. of how amazing we think what your impact is. So here's the warning. Don't have us think more of your mission than you do. Wow. Say that one more time, Creighton. Say that well, one more time. <laughs> don't have us, and, I, and I'm defining us as, in this case, just the funder, right? Sure. But don't, ha ha don't have us be the one who have more of a, a, a open a strategic vision in what you can do than you do. That's great. That's Cut important. To us. And if we are matching with those visions, if you're like, hey, yes, no, you're coming to us with the vision. Yeah. And let me show you how you can be a part of it. Okay. Okay. We see this. Let's now build. Don't leave yeah. those small dollars on the table. That's they, great. That's for that event. No, we want relationships. We right. want to build. Well. That's amazing. Thank you, Creighton, for that. How can people find out more about the work, the community impact work you're doing? Is there is there a website or somewhere they can go to learn a little bit more? Um, and you can always go to um, alcosa24.com. Um, mm -hmm. That website itself will kind of link you to um, not just learning a lot about Coastal itself, but also there's some links directly there that talks about our community impact. And it talks about our coastal foundation and okay. how we built that up and then how we did partners. Um, there's a link with that. There's also a bankbetter.com that we have that also tells like stories of how we've been able to do that. And with the partners, uh, okay. people who are probably listening to this because some of our nonprofit partner stories are told on that, um, that same website because we're wanting to expose and expand everyone. Yeah. A lot of value is simply in uh, being known. Yeah. Like we understand when we built that, that concept of the power sharing, the yeah. same that that concept was about how can we uplift nonprofits? Cause too many people have no idea that one out of every 10 jobs in our country is a nonprofit job. Yeah. We did own that. Now let's talk economic development. We could take this into any industry conversation we want to That's and right. not there. Therefore, we want to be able to share that stories and lift the platform, lift the stage. If we can put it on social, we put it on social. We want yeah. to do any way we can. So looking at those, that's how you can connect with us. And that's how we want to continue to try to uplift well, that's great. Well, coastal24.com and bankbetter.com are two ways to look. And if uh, if you're out and about, you'll probably run into Creighton at, at some nonprofit event in the next few weeks would be my guess. So uh, thank you, Creighton, for all you do. And uh, and uh, Angel Oak salutes you for that and and for the impact that you're that you're making on uh, our community. So thank you for that. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening today. Uh, we certainly would encourage you and hope that you might uh, explore a few more of our episodes of Nonprofit State of Minds and uh, maybe tell somebody else about it. So, Creighton, thank you, sir. Uh, look forward to uh, continuing to follow you, and uh, and uh, we'll just uh, continue to, uh, to let people know just how great a, a place that Coastal is to help make an impact in our community. Well, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for continuing to be a beacon for, yeah. for nonprofits and for everyone around. So thank you all.